Now, uh, let's start with structural engineers. What do we do? Let's let's try to recapture what we do in our in our lives. Well, we, we we model the real world, don't we? We try to model the real world in the best way possible, and uh, we try to make a model which is a multi-material model. It can have steel, it can have concrete, it can have other materials, uh, and we uh, we try to make sure that it it resembles it in the best possible way what the real world scenario will be, so that our analyses are correct. Uh, we do analysis after the, after this modeling, and so we we uh, create a simplified analysis model which to the best of our uh, understanding reflects the actual uh, the actual structure which is going to be built uh, this is usually done by finite elements and uh, this this model uh, looks a bit different from the real one but we try to make it as close as possible as far as analysis is concerned uh, and so that, so that it reflects what the reality is what we do next is an iterative process uh, once we are done with the analysis, uh, an iterative st uh, process starts, and we do what is co what we call design. And uh, by this, what we mean is it's the sizing of the various cross sections, the placement of the re the rebars, the placement of connections. And it, the reason why I call it an iterative process is that uh, the moment you change a section, your the, the analysis which you did on the previous stage is now uh, obsolete, and it needs to be done again. So this is an iterative process in which we, we go through several uh, phases of analysis and design and analysis and design and finally we get to a point where we are satisfied with the with the results. Uh, at this point we do the detailing. We uh, actually sit down and do the exact measurements right down to the closest, uh, right down to the millimeter uh, if needed. And we pr produce the drawings based on this. And we even create fabrication and constructible information. These days, we're we're not living in the world of uh, 20, 20, 30 years ago, not even 10 years ago. Uh, we are living in a world where everything needs to be modeled the way it's going to be built. And this uh, model then is used for creating fabrication information and constructible information, which people can then use uh, at the site. And of course, if, when we're dealing with such advanced software, we need to coordinate because there's not one company which is making a project there are several companies which are involved so we coordinate and we share this project information through what is uh, coming to be, becoming uh, known as the BIM standard building information model standard and we want to convey this information now uh, there's a lot as, as you can see there's modeling there's analysis uh, there's design there's detailing there's fabrication there's BIM so there's a lot which we do. It, it starts off with the green field, but then it goes through, goes through many stages. And it is perhaps uh, for this reason uh, that different companies have developed different softwares for all these stages. So if you, if you were to look around, you would see that the, there's a modeling and analysis uh, step in, uh, in, in this process. And uh, there are dedicated there are softwares which have uh, which are dedicated to doing just modeling and analysis. So you you must have heard of lots of these names like Stad and SAP and Midas and S Frame and Robot and ETabs and there's so many others. Uh, maybe hundreds of other software softwares which are available. Some more popular than the others. But what I want to emphasize right now this is one step. This is this is not the entire. Uh, process uh, which which we as structural engineers and designers go have to go through every day this is just one step of the process the and the modeling and analysis part and then of course we have to do the design and sometimes uh, some of these softwares which i mentioned above they do take up uh, some of the design steps but usually it's kind of related to the element design like the frame element design usually it doesn't really go beyond that but then that's not all we do. We do component design as well, don't we? We do, by components, you can think of any specialized part of the structure which needs to be uh, analyzed, which needs to be designed and analyzed as a separate entity. So one example would be your steel connections, for example. And now here again, we see a, a host of different software which, which have entered the market, like uh, Procon and Limcon, and all these are for connection design and other 
components of, the, of, of your structure as well. So once again, we are faced with a host of new software, uh, which we have to pay for uh, because the modeling is done, but modeling and analysis is done by different softwares. The design is done by different software. Sometimes the component design is once again done by other softwares. Uh, and it doesn't end there, does, uh, does it? it? It continues with the detailing and drafting, and here we are faced with other choices. So we are bombarded with all these hundreds of thousands of different softwares we have to choose from and pay for, obviously. Uh, so in the detailing world, we, we now uh, we have to produce drawings. So we have AutoCAD, we have BrickCAD, we have so many others, there's no, there's no need to mention. But the point being that uh, at every step of the process, our job is not finished. Our building is still unconstructed. Our structure is still in our minds. Uh, it's not being, uh, it's not being uh, finalized. It's not being constructed yet. But uh, we are continuously changing software. We are continuously going to these different software um, providers and producing model after model after after model to uh, get to where we want to get to. And then it's not uh, the end yet as well. It's, there's fabrication. There's uh, fabrication literally means you're down to the to the millimeter now. And uh, here we're talking about very advanced, very expensive software suites like Tecla Structures, Advanced Steel, BOCAD. And uh, this is what we have to go through, unfortunately, every day in our lives. Uh, and then there is uh, structural BIM. We have to coordinate with other companies. We have to coordinate with other suppliers. We have to co coordinate with our other subcontractors. Uh, so we use Revit, we use Tecla Structures again. Uh, there are other options as well. But what I wanted to emphasize with this slide is that we go through several steps as structural engineers. And there's the modeling, the design, the component design, the detailing, the fabrication, the structural being. And for each of these steps, we have to get a software because obviously we're not living in a world where we do these things by hand. So for the modeling, we have a software. For the design, we have a software. For the detailing, we have a software. For the fabrication, we have a software. And these softwares are usually not compatible with each other, let me emphasize. Uh, there are many cases in which uh, a lot of the work has to be redone uh, because although the world is trying to get to a common standard by, by which these uh, programs can communicate, but that common standard by definition is not proprietary. And if it's not proprietary, what that also implies is that there will be loss of information. So these uh, programs, although they do occasionally speak to each other, but uh, there is loss inform of information. So there's a lot of uh, work which needs to be redone. Uh, and we eventually end up spending many, many more hours than we could have. Uh, so this is what we're faced with. Now, modeling and analysis, a software, design a software, detailing another software, fabrication another software. Now what's happening over here on your right? I'm trying to paint a picture of what the structure suite is all about. If you see on the right, I'm gonna go through this again, from modeling to design, to detailing, to fabrication, to structural BIM. What if we had all this in one packet? What if all this was done by a single software which took you from greenfield to the finished building, from modeling to analysis, to design, to detailing, to drafting, to fabrication, to communication of the results with everybody else. That would save us time. That would save us money. And that is what portal structure is all about.